it is going to be a very interesting year. On January 1st of 2023, Oregon became the first state in the US to allow the adult use of psilocybin, more commonly referred to as magic mushrooms. New at four, psilocybin is one step closer to becoming a reality in Oregon. Oregonians approved Measure 109 in 2020, opening the door to legal psilocybin therapy treatment in Oregon. So about two years ago, voters in Oregon passed Measure 109, which authorized the creation of psilocybin service centers where anyone over the age of 21 can consume mushrooms in a supervised setting. People are gonna be able to go to Oregon this year and legally take psilocybin. But this is just the beginning. A number of U.S. cities and states have taken steps to decriminalize psilocybin or have created task forces to investigate its medical use. What is psilocybin and why is science so interested? Psilocybin is a psychedelic. Like magic mushrooms. It's picking up on promising research that began nearly 80 years ago. It's called psilocybin therapy. What does this mean? So psilocybin is a naturally growing psychoactive substance found in the psilocybe genus of mushrooms. Now it's believed to have been used as far back as 9000 BC by Saharan Aboriginal tribes in North Africa. Meanwhile, the Aztecs commonly used psilocybin mushrooms and would consume it during spiritual rituals as a means to communicate with deities. Now it wasn't until 1958 that a Swiss chemist by the name of Albert Hoffman first identified psilocybin as the active compound in these mushrooms. When given orally, the psilocybin contained within the mushroom almost entirely metabolizes to the active metabolite known as psilocin. Now it's the properties of psilocin that allow the molecules to pass into the brain where the neuropsychiatric effects are primarily mediated through the serotonin receptors. Now the extent of the altered perceptions can vary from visual to auditory sensations. When trying to describe what a psychedelic experience feels like, many often find it challenging because of the subjective nature of these substances. However, over the past few years, we've now been able to do a little bit deeper of a dive into understanding some of the changes in brain activity through neuroimaging technology. Now in the brain, there is a default mode network known as the DMN, which is a system of connected brain regions that demonstrate increased activity in normal waking consciousness. And also when an individual is not involved in any specific mental exercise. Yes, dear. Now, one of the evolutionary mechanisms of why this network even came to be is that it allows the brain to almost run on autopilot. Now, one of the hypothesized mechanisms with how psilocybin works is it actually decreases the activity found in the default mode network. Now, it's believed that this default mode network actually plays a central role in a variety of different mental health disorders, ranging from anxiety, depression, PTSD, and substance use. For something like depression, patients are often ruminating and having self-deprecating thought patterns, which they are unable to really get out of this cycle. Now, a 2012 study at the Imperial College of Medicine in the UK found that after psilocybin administration, the cerebral blood flow decreased to the default mode network, which disrupted its normal activity. And by doing this, the brain actually adapted and created new neuronal connections known as neuroplasticity. And then in 2014, there was a follow-up study that actually illustrated this enhanced brain activity between regions of the brain that had otherwise underdeveloped because of this default mode network. And so this hypothesized mechanism of how psilocybin may be working is that it disrupts this self-ruminating thought patterns and allows the individual to make these new neuronal connections and think outside the box. One of the ways Michael Pollan actually explained this is, imagine a snowfall on a mountain and you take a sled. The, when the snow has just fell and you take that sled down the mountain, imagine that is your thought pattern. And for those that are stuck in a cycle of rumination, all they can really do is go down that same path. So eventually the groove is so deep that there is no way to really get out of that specific path. And what psilocybin represents is potentially a new snowfall 
And now that individual is able to create any new pathway that they were unable to do before because they were stuck in that specific thought pattern. If you take a quick look on clinicaltrials.gov, you'll find that there are about 95 active or recruiting sites taking place all around the world looking into psilocybin therapy for various conditions. And to be honest, scientists have only really started scratching the surface of understanding psilocybin as well as other psychedelic compounds because of the current legal issues surrounding the class of medication. Currently, psilocybin is a Schedule One controlled substance under the Controlled Substance Act by the DEA. A Schedule One substance is defined as a substance with high potential for abuse and no currently accepted medical use in treatment. However, in 2018, scientists published a manuscript in Neuropharmacology evaluating the abuse potential of medically administered psilocybin. In this study, the researchers and scientists found that psilocybin containing mushrooms were ranked as least harmful harmful compared to all of the other drugs that they evaluated. Now it's only a matter of time before the government has to reevaluate its current stance on psilocybin. The USONA Institute as well as Compass Pathways have both received FDA breakthrough designation for their psilocybin clinical development programs, with USONA Institute receiving it for major depressive disorder and Compass Pathways receiving it for treatment resistant depression. What this FDA breakthrough designation does is that it expedites the development and review of drugs intended to treat serious conditions and when the preliminary clinical evidence demonstrates substantial improvement over currently available therapies. However, all this potential does not come without barriers and challenges. I would say the biggest challenge at this moment is really the lack of education. There is still quite a bit of stigma associated with psychedelic use, even though that during the 60s, there was over 1,000 clinical trials that were done with psychedelics and over 40,000 patients legally dosed because the Controlled Substance Act was only enacted in 1971. One of the things that makes psilocybin and other psychedelics very different compared to some other medications is that the patient's mindset, as well as their immediate environment, can play a major role in how their trip goes. This idea is commonly referred to as set and setting, with set being the mental state of an, that an individual brings to the experience, such as their thoughts and expectations and intentions, as well as the setting, which could include their immediate physical setting or or their social setting. Now the psychedelic experience can be very disorienting for some people, especially for those that are a little bit more rigid in nature and not as accustomed to experiences that they are unfamiliar with. Now if the individual invites this psychedelic experience with feelings of fear, panic, or being in an undesirable setting, the chances of an unpleasant experience can increase dramatically. And this is often referred to as a bad trip. Another challenge with psilocybin is that it is much less predictable than traditional medications found in the hospital or pharmacy. Experience itself can vary widely depending on the dose of psilocybin used as well as the set and setting of the patient. And so because of this, oftentimes in the FDA clinical trials, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder are often cited out as exclusion criteria that would have not allowed the patient to participate in the trial. Because of some of these risks, clinicians and researchers have specifically designed these psilocybin trials to help mitigate dangers for the patient. For both the USONA Institute and Compass Pathways, the psilocybin is given in conjunction with psychotherapy by a mental health professional, followed by psychotherapy sessions to help integrate the takeaways from their psychedelic experience. Most of these trials had a two-person therapy team where the patient would be lying down with eye shades on and headphones on with a pre-specified playlist, thereby increasing the chances for a positive experience. Now, the next few years of psilocybin and psychedelic research is really bound to take off with many researchers and scientists around the world looking into the potential use of these compounds. Now I mentioned that psilocybin is being researched in major depressive disorder as well as treatment resistant depression, but scientists are evaluating the use of psilocybin in a number of different conditions such as opioid addiction, post-traumatic stress syndrome, also known as PTSD, 
alcohol dependence, and many other conditions. Now more than ever, I would say the majority of these conditions are ripe for innovation. The economic burden of major depressive disorder among US adults was an estimated $236 billion in 2018, which was up 35% since 2010. Now for a number of patients, we know that SSRIs and SNRIs can be helpful for some. However, we also know that compliance tends to be an issue for some of these patients because of the side effects or because of the time it takes for these patients to actually see an effect. And for some, these medications just don't work. As a pharmacist, as a healthcare professional, I think that psilocybin has the potential to really help some of these patients and delve deeper into some of the root causes of what's causing their depressive symptoms. I think by the end of this year, we'll start to see some of the takeaways of what happens in Oregon and what happens for these patients at these psilocybin service centers. So really my goal for these videos is really to help educate and address some of these gaps in knowledge so that the viewer is more informed. Hopefully you've learned something with that. Thank you very much for watching the video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.